So, my name is Abhishek Nirmala. I am a principal software engineer at Red Hat. I'm a leading I'm leading GitOps uh, product team, which we are adding as a add-on to OpenShift. I also do uh, videos on YouTube quite active on LinkedIn, and you can also follow me on GitHub. So today I'll be talking about maximizing impact best practices in open source contributions. I love talking about what and why. Let's talk about what is open source. Yeah, this might sound very easy. I think many of you know what is open source. But let's start with a very simple quiz. Which one do you think is open source? Uh, do you think both of them are open source? OK, can we do a hands raise? OK, how many of you think GitHub is open source? OK, great. How many of you think GitLab is open source? OK, so whoever said GitHub is open source, it's wrong. GitHub is not open source. And that is what I want to start this presentation with. Let's try to understand what exactly is open source? In this context, GitHub is actually a freeware, but GitLab is open source. Surprise, right? Some of you at least. Yeah. So, what is the difference between open source and a freeware? It has a lot to do with uh, starting your contributions to open source or, you know, maximizing the impact. So open source is something where the code is publicly, uh, publicly accessible and you can modify and redistribute the purpose. For example, you cannot send a pull request to GitHub, right? Probably you can send a pull request to the repositories in GitHub. But you cannot modify GitHub and you cannot redistribute it. Talking about GitLab, yes, you can do that. So the core of GitLab is actually can be modified, redistribu redistributable. I just wanted to uh, make sure that everyone understands what is open source. So when you see something for free, that doesn't mean it is open source. Open source comes with an intent to allow people to contribute to it, an intent to allow people to share it, redistribute it. Now, why is this buzz about open source? I think last couple of years you might have seen people talking a lot about open source. Of course, it has been there for a long time. We all have been using Linux. But why this entire buzz about open source? Can you even imagine a single day of your life without these things? Definitely not, right? At least I cannot. So these days, Everyone is looking at open source because almost 96% of production applications actually use open source. So it's actually uh, taken from the below source that I've mentioned, but even Linux Foundation mentions that approximately 90% of the applications that are running in production use open source either directly or indirectly. Now let's talk about how to contribute to open source. This is the actual topic for today. And I'm not talking about this. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Definitely not this, right? Update readme file, we have seen this happening. But why? You know, some of it comes from, you know, probably uh, maybe wrong guidance where, you know, contributing a simple readme file or, you know, someone might also be an assumption that if I contribute to open source, you know, it is a way for me to uh, get a job, anything. But definitely this is not the way. But how do we do that? I'll make it very simple. If you are interested in contributing to open source, just like many people do, and the right way for you is to first identify the project. 
And again, identifying the project is not that difficult. If you just go to GitHub, here I have a simple keyword. I'm looking at monitoring projects on GitHub. If monitoring is my uh, area of expertise or monitoring is my area of interest, I'll simply search for monitoring and let's say that I only want to contribute to some cool projects. So I'll filter it with 1000 stars and if I'm good at Go programming, I can just give the language as Go. And this is the result. So it will give you that there are 71 such projects, Abhishek, what you're looking for. And the top three projects are Prometheus, Falcon, and Scope. So this is how you identify how to contribute to open source. I mean, this is the very first step. We haven't contributed yet. and we don't want to do this. So first we will search which project do I want to contribute to and it's better to start with a single project. No, don't uh, try to look at multiple things, don't uh, look at documentation updates in multiple repositories or because you are good at, maybe you are good at Python and you went to 10 such Python projects and you found some simple issues where you want to just contribute to it. Probably your GitHub analytics might look better, but that's not solving the actual purpose, right? Why are we actually contributing to open source? Or why do we want to contribute to open source? Because some or the other way, we are consuming open source, so it is good to give back, right? The whole intent of contributing to open source has to be to give back, but it should not be your GitHub analytics, it should not be that probably you will get placed in a good company, etc. So it's better we identify one such project. Then, what to contribute? Right? Okay, Abhishek, uh, I found using the GitHub search that Prometheus is what I'm looking for. But what do I contribute in Prometheus? Code is not the only thing that you contribute. You can contribute to the test, let's say you are good with Go programming, but you are an automated automation tester. Still you can go look at the test coverage of the repository and you can also contribute to the test. So that is also an open source contribution. You can contribute to documentation as well, but I'm afraid to say that for obvious reasons. When I say documentation, uh, you know, people look at the MD files and you will see the first slide that I showed. But yeah, documentation is also a very good way of contributing. You might be trying some feature of Prometheus and you found out that the documentation is not helping. Happens a lot of times, right? We go to Prometheus, we try out things or we go to uh, Argo, we try out things and then we realize that things are not good in the documentation. Let me go to YouTube channel or let me go to Udemy. You do that, but why don't you come back and update the documentation? It's a good way of giving back. You can also contribute to CACD. Now, not many repos out there, the open source repos out there, they don't have a uh, great CACD. So you can also do that, if you know. You can also contribute to some scripts. It can be a simple make target that is reducing the effort of the contributors who are contributing to open source. Now the thing is, okay, I know what is the project that I want to look for. I know, you know, I want to contribute to the code, let's say. But how do I actually start? Which is the issue that I pick? So any open source popular repositories, they have these labels called good first time labels. So now, the maintainers of the repositories or the reviewers of the repositories, they go through the uh, repos, they look at the issues. Usually there are people who are triaging the issues. For example, let's talk about Argo. So the maintainers of Argo, once in a week we rotate and we look at the issues that are coming to the repo and we decide that if someone wants to start contributing to Argo, they can use this label. Similarly, Prometheus, similarly, you can go to Kubernetes, you'll find such labels. This will be the best place without 
you know, you're waiting for someone to send out that GitHub uh, issue that you're looking for, you can also find it by yourself. Now the thing is, how do I become an active member of the open source community? You contributed the good first time issue, you done all the things, but if your end goal is to become a active contributor, the other speaker was talking about the significance of open source. And even I take pride that you no know, lot of what I learned has come from contributing to open source because uh, talking to a lot of people, talking to, with open source you get a uh, lot of customers, right? Everyone who is creating an issue for you is kind of a customer or is kind of uh, a client for you. So you learn a lot when you contribute to open source and to become a long term member. Of course there are other things, but I've just shortened it. You start with your first PR, then after committing or making good contributions to the particular repository, you can actually become member of that repository. Once you become the member of the repository, then comes